Good afternoon, good evening students, I hope you're doing good, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back with another lecture concerning civilization for third year students. As you can see, it is about um, World War One, the chapter of World War One, but uh, today is about the causes of World War One. So what are the factors that led to the outbreak of the Great War? Um, but before we have already dealt with the first part, that is about Europe before 1914. We've seen about, um, or approximately, uh, let's say, the um, society in Europe and uh, some events that uh, happened, such as the unification of Germany. And um, I wanted to do this because it is very important to understand the causes. Because, uh, for example, if you do not understand what do we mean by unification of Germany, you won't understand the problem of imperialism in the causes that we are going to see in a um, few minutes. Now that being said, I invite you to like the Facebook page of this channel in order to be notified whenever I post something new and also subscribe to the channel in order to be um, notified as well and also that would encourage me to do more and help you out during the period of exams. Without any further ado, we shall start with the causes. In terms of causes, you need to make a clear difference between the uh, remote causes and the immediate ones. Uh, the remote causes, you can find them under the name of um, long-term causes and immediate ones, they can also be found under the name of uh, direct causes or short-term causes. The difference between the two is easy. The fact that long-term causes existed long before the beginning of the war in 1914, so these uh, causes or long-term causes existed before and they kept existing a long time uh, until the beginning of the war. So th they were considered as major problems, of course, that uh, led to the beginning of the war. But when it comes to short causes, it's, I mean, uh, the moment they appeared, it led directly to the war. It's like the, uh, the spark, the fire that these empires needed is the direct causes. Of course, generally, you are going to find only one immediate or direct or short-term um, cause. Uh, but I prefer to um, to put two, according to me, of course, and according to other historians, uh, of course. Um, we have, uh, you can find nationalism both in long-term causes and also short-term causes. But the difference between the two is that the long-term nationalism is the concept, the idea, the feeling. And the short-term uh, nationalism, or the short-term cause nationalism, is um, the result of the idea of nationalism uh, in general, because that nationalism led to something that we call um, the uh, terrorist organizations that we are going to see later on along with the video. Now we shall start with the titles of the long-term causes and we are going to give the titles of the short-term causes and then we are going to explain them one by one. So the first title is for the long-term causes is industrialization and imperialism. So imperialism is um, interrelated with industrialization. I will explain why. Then we can put nationalism and propaganda. Then we are going to talk about arms race and militarism in general and the system of alliances. This is a very um, famous point that we need to discuss. When it comes to the short-term causes, it, we have two. We have nationalism as a result of the ID. Uh, so we are going to uh, talk about the relation between nationalism and the assassination of the, um, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Um, we are going to make the link between the assassination and the uh, concept of nationalism. And that would be the end of our lecture. So we start with industrialization. So industrialization, um, it was, as you all know, it was the age of industrial revolution, um, technological advances. We have um, military uh, revolutions as well. In order to realize or to achieve all this, you needed to, um, or they needed, these uh, European empires needed to have an industry. In order to make the industry work, um, you have uh, the raw materials. So the raw materials were not found usually in Europe. They had to go to other continents in order to get these raw materials. But the European empires aimed to get these raw materials for free. This is why they initiated what we call imperialism. 
Now, like I said, industrialization and imperialism are interrelated. Before I start explaining imperialism, we shall finish first with industrialization. So, I said that we needed, or they needed, the raw materials in order to make industry work, in order to uh, increase the, um, the, let's say, the, the products, the goods, and also the machines, the, the, the weapons and all, uh, because there was uh, a kind of competition between the uh, the empires of that uh, period, of course, and also the in industrialization required the working force. They needed, um, they needed, uh, let's say, uh, more more people to work in industry, uh, to work in the factories, in order to make the country great and strong, and also wealthy. And thanks to industrialization, they needed to um, to have markets in order to trade. This is what we said. Um, in the previous video uh, concerning Europe before 1914, they needed um, or they initiated what we call globalization. These empires did not only trade between or among themselves, but they traded with other continents such as America, such as Asia, such as Africa. And um, although they wanted to, let's say, uh, globalize the trade, most of Asia and most of Africa was uh, colonized by the either French or um, the British and the Russians in Asia, in the case of Asia. So this is one of the, um, let's say, um, problems that led to the, the beginning of the war. But how did industrialization contribute to the uh, outbreak of the Great War? Of course, industrialization didn't lead directly to the war between the empires, but it led to imperialism. Uh, imperialism, sorry, imperialism is uh, one of the outcomes of the in industrial revolution. They needed raw materials, so they had to colonize other country countries in order to get uh, the uh, these uh, raw materials, which uh, they were needed in order to uh, develop industry in Europe. Now we talk about imperialism. So imperialism. Um, during the 19th century, of course, you should know that imperialism existed long before it existed when the Industrial Revolution and even before the British Empire. I mean, um, it developed long before the Industrial Revolution, of course. But our concern today is about the uh, imperialism of 19th century, the 19th century. So during the 19th century, Europeans or Europeans controlled most of Africa and Asia, like I said, because at that time, having as much colonies as possible defined an empire's wealth. And by the 1900s, a competition emerged between the European empires. If you take an example, um, the German Empire, that was a newborn empire that came to life after the unification of Germany. So when the German Empire emerged, it didn't, uh, or the Germans in general didn't find a way to become powerful because almost all the countries of the world were colonized either by uh, Britain or France or Russia. So they didn't find a place to colonize in order to make their impact and become powerful. So this competition emerged between the empires. So who says competitions says tensions between the empires. So this is the first um, impact of imperialism according to the World War I. Imperialism somehow um, enhanced that feeling of, uh, let's say, despise and hate and competition between mainly the German Empire and the other empires that were already strong. So at that time, Britain was the strongest empire. And of course, how did imperialism gave power to an empire, we should know that, uh, it gave them more people to fight for the colonizer. For example, Britain uh, colonized Egypt, just an example. Whenever Britain went to war, those who lived in Egypt could have been taken to fight the war for Britain. So they had more people, more soldiers, and also the raw materials. Do not forget, like I said, it was the age of industrial revolution, technological advances, and military revolutions. These let's say three things, major things, needed the raw materials in order to develop, in order to keep going. And how do you get the free raw materials? It's by colonizing other weaker, um, weaker nations 
and this is what we call imperialism. So this is um, basically imperialism is related with the tension that um, created. I mean, certain kind of tensions were created thanks or due to imperialism between the empires of Europe at that time, especially between the German Empire and uh, the other empires. Even imperialism created tensions between Britain and France, according to or um, related to the, the, the nations or the countries to colonize in Africa. Then we move to the second point, the second cause, um, or the third one. Uh, it's historical and contemporary grievances. This point is mainly related uh, to expansions and contractions of, of empires, of course. So when you have, if you have an empire that has expanded, it means another empire has contracted. Now this is one point, or let's say this is one way of seeing things. So when you have a nation that is colonized by an empire, then that empire leaves and another empire takes its place. This kind of expansion and contraction leaves a bad impression on the colonized people. It's like they will feel that they are uh, they are weak and all and somehow they deserve their uh, freedom. Therefore, usually these people wanted to regain their political sovereignty. So this is, um, if you take an example of uh, Austria-Hungary empire, uh, I mean Bosnia and Herzegovina was or were uh, included into that empire, but they wanted to break off because they didn't want to be ruled by Austria-Hungary. They wanted to belong to somewhere, um, let's say, uh, they thought that they belonged with Serbia because they are uh, they are considered to be Slavs. It's uh, more likely they look like uh, the Russians uh, in general. Uh, not exactly, but they look like uh, Russians. This is the second or the third um, cause. The fourth one is the famous system of alliances. You should know that system of alliances was supposed to keep peace. For example, you have um, Germany that made an alliance with Austria-Hungary and Russia with France, for example. If Germany hits France, Russia would hit Germany. So Germany now has to think twice before hitting France. Same thing, if France hits Germany, Austria-Hungary would hit France and so France had to think twice before doing so. This is, I mean, this was the point of Bismarck with the system of alliances. He wanted to keep peace. He wanted to avoid war. But the system of alliances, it's one of the, let's say, um, the major causes of the world war. It was one of the reasons why many empires participated in that bloody war. So when it comes to the system of alliances, it is a series of pacts and alliances that were made. Some were cancelled and some remained. Uh, I'm going to give you those who, or those which remain, sorry, uh, but you should know that there are some alliances that were made but they were cancelled eventually. Uh, for example, between Germany and Russia, some of the alliances uh, were cancelled. So we start with the Triple Alliance in 1882. So all these alliances were uh, or remained. So we have the Triple Alliance in 1882 between Germany, Austria-Hungary and Italy, but Italy left and they joined um, the uh, Allies later on. We have the Entente Cordiale of 1904. It's an agreement or an alliance between Britain and France. So they settled their disputes and they decided to make an alliance against uh, Germany. Then we have the Anglo-Russian Accord of 1907, that was an alliance between Britain and Russia. Since Britain, France, Britain, Russia didn't have a problem, and France was already friend, or let's say agreed with Russia, um, they made another and the final alliance that we call the Triple Entente. This is very important, you need to retain this. The Triple Entente was between Britain, France and Russia. This is what we call the Allies. Then Europe was divided into two blocks. Central powers between Germany and Austria-Hungary and the Allies. 
Of course, the Allies later on were joined by uh, the United States of America and Italy as well when Italy left um, the uh, Triple Alliance. Another cause is unrestrained press. This is very important. So at that time, we had what we call the yellow journalism. So journalists were more interested in business rather than telling the bitter truth of Europe. And this led to another cause of World War I, there is unrestrained nationalism. Before I go to nationalism, we need to, let's say, um, expand or develop about the press. When we say yellow journalism, at that time, journalists um, were more, and they, they even did this in, uh, in Britain, uh, usually, which led to which is one of the reasons why the United States uh, entered the war. So you have these journalists who were more interested in gaining or, um, let's say, uh, having money instead of telling the bitter truth. That was an ugly truth, a dark truth. But they wanted to make false or um, spread false facts or false truth. Um, this led to um, misleading people in general. And the fact that they were people were blind, this led to what we call blind patriotism or excessive patriotism, which is the unrestrained nationalism that is another cause for World War One. Now, before I go to unrestrained nationalism, we are going to talk about uh, the military and arms race. So when we talk about militarism, um, there was an arms race between the empires of that time. So we have this point here to make, militarism and arms race, we are going to make it as one cause. Then we have nationalism as a remote cause and nationalism as an immediate cause and the last point of the immediate cause in order not to mislead you as students right now. So militarism is um, when the Anglo-German uh, or the uh, the British and the Germans uh, were arms racing, if it is right to say. For example, there was what we call the HMS Dreadnought. HMS is a ship it, it stands for a ship. Uh, the full name is Her Majesty's Ship. This ship was built by the British called the Dreadnought. This ship was supposed to end all ships of Europe. It was um, uh, automatic, 12-inch uh, gun. I have given some details about this uh, in the previous video. So the, the, the British wanted to control the, the seas. Now, Germany, as a new empire, wanted to surpass the British Navy. This created a tension between England and Germany. Okay? There was, there was a, a case that we call the Daily Telegraph affair. So we have Wilhelm II, or Kaiser Bill, as um, most of the British uh, called him. But we're going to call him William II, um, which is more academic. He was the emperor of the German Empire. He was invited by a British press in order to clarify things. They asked him questions. So among the questions were, why are you trying to build um, a great navy? Is it to surpass our navy or the British navy in general? Instead, uh, settling things, he said that, yes, we are trying to surpass Britain in terms of navy. And he also, he also, um, uh, told that, told the press, the British press that the British people are crazy. Like I said, there was the unrestrained press. The British even took this as a better reason to or the British press took this as a better reason to spark things between England and Germany more. This is on one hand. On the other hand, there was a Franco-German tensions as well. Germany, do not forget, after the unification of Germany, 
Germany took territories from France, the Alsace and the Lorraine. And of course this happened after establishing their empire. So these kind of tensions between France and Germany remained. It was like France wanted revenge, so they still resented or despised the German empire in general. So this is about militarism and arms race as far um, as they're concerned. Um, now we move to nationalism. Nationalism as uh, a remote cause and as an immediate um, cause. When it comes to nationalism as a concept, it is put in a remote, a remote cause or a long-term cause. So nationalism was basically um, a result of a result of yellow journalism or the press. So the press of each country was given claims, given facts. Most of them weren't true, so this gave the feeling to the people of every empire or every country to to feel like uh, or to feel more patriotic, um, as if in case their countries are going to war, they are going to step up and defend their lands because they all thought that they are going to fight for a just cause. This is nationalism. This is as a remote cause. But if you want to put it as an immediate cause, you can take the result of this nationalism in terms of terrorist organizations. Among these organizations are or is the Black Hand. It is a Serbian terrorist organization. So basically, Serbia wanted to or wanted um, Bosnia and Herzegovina to break off from the Austrian uh, or Austrian. Austria-Hungary Empire and this was supported by Russia as well because um, these two um, let's say these two countries were or belong to the Slavic people now Serbia made this terrorist organization that is called the Black Hand that is a result of a blind patriotism and the blind patriotism is a result of unrestrained nationalism. This is can be or this can be put in um, a direct cause for the war. Because why? Because it led to what we call the final cause, that is the precipitating event. On June 28, 1914, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to Austria-Hungary Empire. Uh, was assassinated by an agent from the organization between brackets of course the black hand this is the immediate cause of the war after this Austria Hungary declared war on Serbia and to illustrate this is how the system of alliances started to work in favor to war so to demonstrate to you how did the system of alliances um, work, but not to keep peace, but to emerge war. So we have Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Russia was an ally of Serbia. Russia prepared to help Serbia. Germany declared war on Russia because Germany is an ally of Austria-Hungary. France then declared war on Germany because France was an ally of Russia. And of course, France declared war on both on Germany and Austria-Hungary. Germany attacked France through the Belgium uh, borders, or through Belgium in general. Um, Belgium was a neutral country, according to the Treaty of London in 1839. Um, so, whenever Belgium was invaded by Germany, Germany here violated a treaty that it accepted long time ago. Now, Belgium was invaded by Germany. England thought that it should protect the Treaty of 1839, so it was a duty of England to enter the war because of the violation of Germany. So Belgium pulled in Britain into war. Then Japan entered the war, of course, later on Italy and the United States enter on the side of the Allies in 1917. This is how the system of alliances worked and 
it was the beginning of the war. So the next video we are going to see the war, the, the war itself and the US entry to war. We are going to see the reasons and I tell you, see you in the next video. Peace.